uh, these are the actual processes that take place in the urine formation and these are the processes that we are only interested in this class and once you understand the process of urine formation will be done with the physiology of the renal system the process is divided into three stages we have the process of filtration reabsorption and secretion and each of them take place in a very specific region in the nephron as we'll see as we progress so the filtration process takes place in the Bowman's capsule where the specifically are the capillaries and the process is non-selective where the blood is forced into small pores under high pressure and the liquid part of blood all of it will be forced to filter out of the capillaries so after filtration some of it will later will be reabsorbed uh, these are what the body requires later so much of the water will be reabsorbed including the glucose and amino acids and some ions uh, most of the reabsorption process which take place from all the way from the proximal convoluted tubule all the way to the distal part of it and even to the collecting tubule is a passive process where it uses the process of either diffusion or osmosis for the case of water but if you have a cases of uh, a primary active transport and secondary active transport will be used to reabsorb some other materials. Uh, the nitrogenous waste that are excreted include urea. Urea is a byproduct in the urea cycle where deamination of amino acid takes place and we end up with ammonia being very toxic. So it will have to be combined uh, later into a more stable element and we end up with urea. Uric acid is a byproduct for the metabolism of purines in the body and much of it is excreted in the kidney and in case we have a build up of uric acid we end up a condition called hyperuricemia that will later lead into a type of an arthritis called gautic arthritis we equally have creatinine creatinine is a byproduct of uh, the breakdown of muscle tissue and being that it doesn't usually get reabsorbed so it's quite important in measuring the functionality of the kidney because the level of it that is uh, being able to be secreted from urine measures the functionality of the kidney. And you'll later re hear a condition or a test called the UEC, so kidney function test. You simply measure the level of urea in the blood and correlate it with how much of it is expected to be produced in the day and how much has been excreted in a day and give a rough estimate of the function of the kidney. So all those materials are not reabsorbed and equally the excess water sometimes cannot be reabsorbed but that one is dependent on the osmolarity of the body. So reabsorption, is, uh, so finally we end up with a process of secretion. So some materials uh, cannot be uh, reabsorbed back or secreted from the blood and they have to be moved from the blood into the peri uh, peritubular capillaries. And an example of those one are hydrogen and potassium ion together with the creatinine. And they have to be secreted directly from uh, the capillaries into the, into the renal tubules. So diagrammatically wise, so we'll start with the process from here, uh, from the Bomas capsule where we have a higher hydrostatic pressure. It will force the blood to exit. And the journey begins by reabsorbing all uh, the required element and it moves all the way to the loop of Henley, up to the ascending loop and into the descending convoluted tubule. So at the collecting duct, we have the receptors here for an hormone that we did talk about it, that was being secreted from the posterior pituitary gland. So that's the ADH or fasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. So once it activates the receptors here, it increases the reabsorption of water and ensure that a lot of water is not lost in the body. But however, in situation, assume that you immediately take a lot of water. So it deactivates the secretion of the ADH and the receptors are blocked and you are able to produce a lot of diluted urines in the process. So for individuals who have the issues with the receptor, for example, um, with this receptor, they end up producing a lot of diluted urine and we call that one diabetes insipidus. Uh, you end up with forming urine, which will be stored at the bladder. And later, once the bladder usually stretches, the voiding takes place. But these are the characteristics of the normal urine. 
the color is usually somewhat a little bit yellow in color because of the eurochrome which is a byproduct of the destruction or the heme synthesis and uh, also urine are sterile and they only become unsterile once they pass through the ureter where we have some normal flora there but while they're still within the bladder they are still sterile and unless someone has a urinary tract infection that is when the urine become unsterile so the color is usually you know the color of urine because of small slight traces of ammonia give you that aromatic um smell in terms of the ph we say that usually towards the a bit of the acidic side and the specific gravity is just slightly above water by that magnitude